Hi and welcome to the second part of this uh, 11th lecture on FTK with me, Joachim Shevrestad from the University of uh, Skövde. And right now I'm in. Uh, we're going to uh, have a look around at the different functions of FTK, uh, basically getting some know-how on how to find uh, how how to find and treat evidence in in a good way. We're gonna look at the different places in FTK, look at some different searches and some shortcuts to some inf uh, interesting information and so on and so forth. Uh, so to begin, uh, where we left off last time was just when we had created a case. You know, we selected our pre-processing options and then we selected create case and where we end up after we do that is that FTK opens up for us and we get uh, into the uh, case that is currently empty because there's no evidence in it and we get to the manage evidence pane. And that's where I am right now and as you can see I've already put some evidence here for us because what happens when you add evidence and hit OK is that all the pre-processing options would run and I don't have to or I don't want to wait for that in a video demo. Uh, but I'm gonna show you real quick how to add evidence. What you do is basically that you hit add down here and then you get to select what type of evidence you want to add. Uh, the pre-checked one is acquired images which is a forensic image which you should as, as long as possible you should always try to work with uh, images that you acquired in a forensically sound way. But you can also add, uh, for instance, all the images in a directory, the contents of a directory, individual files, uh, or you can directly add the logical or physical drive. Um, uh, in my opinion, or in my experience, you never really work with physical or logical drives directly into FTK. Uh, however, there are times when you want to add uh, individual files. Uh, one such time is if you uh, find some encrypted data and you manage to decrypt that and you may want to add that as an individual file for further analysis. Uh, but for now go with acquire images, hit OK and then browse to your image and mark your image and hit open. And I want to uh, notify you on one thing here. Uh, if you look at for instance uh, this ID theft.eo1 file, uh, something that you should know about uh, uh, forensic images is that, as we discussed in the FTK Imager demo, they're usually segmented into lesser pieces. So if you look at this one, which is called Dator i Sovrum, you see that it is uh, 1.5 gigabytes large. And if I select here to view all files, you can see that there is this uh, EO1 file and uh, following that there is EO2, EO3 and so on and so forth. And all those uh, EO1 to EO uh, E12 makes up the entire disk image. So, so that's common. But as you see, when I have the all image file selected here, only the EO1 is selected. So there's a pointer in there that points to the rest of the files. So select what you want to the image you want to add for analysis in FTK. Select open, and you can see that it turns up here. Uh, something that you need to do is select a time zone and if you know the time is going to be of essence for your case you should make sure that you select the time zone that's accurate for the image. So if the image is uh, acquired in Cairo then you should select Africa Cairo. If it's acquired in Sweden you should select uh, uh, Sweden or Stockholm and so on and so forth. And this ensures that the timestamps in, in FTK are displayed in a correct way. So when I select OK here, the pre-processing tasks will run and it's going to take a while. So uh, since I already done that, I'm going to go ahead and remove Clampit and we will work this demo with the Dottori Sovrum image that I'm actually using for my course in Skövde. So to get out of here, we can select cancel and then we're in FTK. And what you see now is the, the what you see when you open up FTK. And I want to show you uh, the different panes here. So first, if you look at the top left here, you have the uh, the tree pane, if you will, uh, where you have a listing of all the evidence you have in your case and you can browse your evidence as you would any file system or device that's mounted in your operating system. So for instance you can go to partition 2, there's an NTFS partition, uh, 
uh, the, the root of the file system and you can see instantly that this is a Windows partition because we have Windows, users, program files and other things that we expect to see on a Windows system. And I can browse browse about here as I like. Um, some things that I want to show you right away is some nice functions within... Uh, or, let's wait. Um, below in the bottom pane here is the file listing view and that's basically where the contents of the folder that I have marked up here in the evidence pane is so uh, now I've marked user and then you can see the data that's in the users folder listed down here um, and that's not very interesting so if we dig down there we go to the D dude we go to Contacts, maybe there is something cool. No, there isn't. We go to pictures and we go to uh, save pictures. No, we go to pictures. Okay, that's good. So if I select a picture here, like that one, then you can th then it will end up in the file content viewer, which is up here. And there we have four different ways of looking at files. First, we have the natural view. And the natural view is where FTK uh, tries to show you the file as it's meant to be shown. Uh, if you right click in here you can have some different view options. For example in this case best fit might be good so we can have a better view of the picture. Uh, but in the natural view uh, FTK uses built-in viewers to present the file to you as it is supposed to be seen. So if it's a Word document it's it looks like a Word document, if it's a PDF it looks like a PDF and so on and so forth. Uh, then we have the hex view which shows you the data uh, of the file in hexadecimal and in ASCII and to the right here you have the offsets within the file. Uh, and this can be useful in some, some instances if you want to look at uh, the data in a more raw format. For instance here you can see that we have a JPEG picture, you can see the, the JPEG header up here, you can see that there is some EXIF data in it and so on and so forth. Uh, next we have text which is basically uh, FTK's way of trying to extract all the text from the document. Maybe if we select desktop.ini here something more interesting will happen. Yeah like that. Uh, and finally we have the filtered view which is where FTK tries to take what's interesting if you will from the text view and present it in a nice format. In this case it doesn't make any difference but say that you're looking at uh, some, uh, some text file that's using a markup language and if you look at it as text you're just gonna see the code and if you look at it in filtered view the code will be removed and you will just see the the data uh, something like that uh, next in the file content tab we have if you look down here we have we're now at file content that's when we're looking at the actual content the data the file consists of uh, we can also go to properties which is a tab that shows the metadata related to this file and this is where we will find stuff like exif data office metadata or just file system metadata so we see this the size uh, dates we can see some file attributes uh, we can see some more NTFS information like the NTFS uh, or the MFT record number, when it was last changed, if it's a resident file or not, and so on and so forth. Um, next we have the hex interpreter, which is basically where if there are values within the file that are seen as uh, hexadecimal values, then FTK will try to interpret it for you in all of those different ways. Uh, I've never used that function. So that's the different panes. We have the evidence tree here where we can browse our evidence. Whatever we mark will be present in the file listing down here and whatever we mark here will be viewed as a file up here. Uh, there is one more thing that I want to show you which is a really wonderful function of FTK and that's the quick picks. Uh, as you see here, there is an arrow in front of each and every folder, and that's the quick pick arrow. And what happens here is that I can, if I want, uh, click the arrow in front of a folder, and now that's quick picked. What that means is that I will display what's whatever that is in this folder and all of its subfolders down in the file listing here. So uh, let's say that I want to display 
all the data that's related to all the user. Then I can quick pick the uh, users folder and now all data in administrator use all users default and all subfolders and those will be presented down here. Uh, it's also possible to quick pick a couple of different folders. Let's say I want to work with oops I want to work with uh, administrator and public. Now I'm doing that. Uh, what you need to uh, pay attention to is that when you have quick picks on, it doesn't matter if you go mark other folders here because the quick pick fo the, the folders that you are viewing using quick picks is always going to be present in the file listing. So now it doesn't matter how much I browse around, the file listing doesn't change. And you can see up here that when I have quick picks on somewhere down in the tree structure, the the little folder here, uh, or there is a little yellow folder on the arrow here. Uh, the quick way to completely turn off quick picks is to enable it in the root of the tree like that, and then click again and it's completely removed. So that's the one thing. Uh, next thing I want to show you here about how to use uh, FTK is checking files. Uh, you may go about to uh, browse your case and you start working on things and you go to recovery and then you may, no you don't, you go to program data and then you see something here, hmm, ntuser.pull, that sounds cool, I want to do something to that and then you can check it by pressing in the box here and then you're moving on, you're going to root, hmm, bad clusters, what is that, I'm checking that and so on and so forth and you see that now we're starting to accumulate a number of checked files here. Uh, and checked files is very good, but what you should know is that the files never gets unchecked uh, unless you uncheck them on your own. So it's a very common mistake that you do check a lot of files and you bookmark them or do a search on them or something and then you continue to check more files and then uh, you suddenly remember that there are a hell lot of more files checked than what you anticipated. So I'm gonna show you uh, how to handle the checked files. So uh, of course you can check and de-check by clicking out here in the box but you can also use the little quick shortcuts up here. So the first one um, that's sort of a lot of boxes st uh, stacked on each other will unshake all files in the case. The middle one which is two boxes stacked on each other will uncheck all files in the current listing and the final one which is two checked boxes will check all files in the current listing. So something that you should make sure that you do is that whenever you work with a lot of checked files and you've done what you want to do to them you should use the uncheck all button to start again with zero checked files. And so that's checked files. Uh, you should know that whenever we, as we will now dig into deeper analysis, we will deep dig into bookmarking, searching, etc, etc. You can usually choose to do your actions either to all files in the case, to the checked files, or to the listed files. So if I have some files checked here, I can sh choose to do a search over the three checked files that I have, over all files that are currently listed, or over all files that are in the entire case. So let's be good and uncheck those. Uh, next thing I want to show you is the different options that we have here. So uh, starting at the top menu bar here we have files which basically is where we can do the normal file things. We can close and exit where if I remember correctly exit leaves uh, this case and takes us back to the database and close will close FTK altogether. It might be the other way around. Uh, we can do job summary report uh, which is basically a report that will tell us what jobs we've done in this case. Uh, we can get a timeline report which is a report of uh, what happened, happened when in the system if you will. Uh, we can do a normal report which we'll, we'll get to. Uh, we can export system information and that's if we use the system information uh, uh, option in the pre-processing. We can export word list, which we can do if we generated an index, and then we get a word list that we can use in PRTK for password cracking. And then there is file list, uh, where, where we can get a listing of all the files in the case. And there is export to image, where we can export some files or the entire case to a forensic image. And next we have edit, where there is copy special, which we can use to uh, extract files from the case. 
uh, then there is a view which basically tells us what we want to display not going to talk more about that uh, then we have evidence and on evidence there is two things that I want to show you first there's the add remove which takes us back to the evidence manager where we can add more evidence if we will uh, you should note however that if we add evidence here and tr press OK all the pre-processing options that are that we set for this case will run and it's going to take a lot of time so that's something to do before a long coffee break uh, under evidence there is also additional analysis which is uh, where you can run uh, the different tools in FTK again so if you find out that you for some reason you didn't run OCR during the pre-processing but you want to do it now then you can uh, do it by going to evidence additional analysis uh, select OCR and then OK and you will go um, filters which we're going to talk about soon so there was a quick crash there but and now we're back and we're continuing on with tools and what I want to show you under tools is uh, only one cool thing and that is mount image to drive which is basically a cool feature that lets you uh, mount the drive that you're examining as uh, a drive with a, with a drive letter within Windows so that you can browse it and this is quite cool because it lets you see uh, the system as as it was seen on the computer and it also lets you use uh, tools outside of FTK in a very simple way so I want to tell you that this feature is a little bit shaky but if you make sure that you choose logical only as the mount type uh, drive letter that's fine and as mount method you want to mount uh, uh, the image as file system and then you just press mount here and you will see that your a device or the partitions on your device gets mounted and you can just go to the file browser uh, you can go to this PC and you see here that they turn out turn up as fat fat devices but you are free to just browse around and it's commonly a little bit shaky a little bit slow but it works to some extent and it's very cool so we're gonna unmount those and move on uh, under tools there is also the disk viewer where you can what view the disk um well in a more what should i say data way you can jump around to or you can view different clusters and i want to tell you that the disk view in ftk is uh, in my opinion very limited I, I, I've never used it. There are better programs if you want to look at the data in, in that way. And next we have Manage, where you can manage KFF, photo DNA, labels, doo -doo 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 -doo. not going to talk about that. And finally, Help, where you can know a little bit about FTK. So that's that for the top menu. Next I'm going to show you the different tabs that's here. And we're, we've already been looking at the Evidence Explore tab a little bit, where you can browse around do quick picks and things like that um, but now we're gonna go into the other tabs because one of the great things about FTK is that it uh, categorizes data for you in a way that makes it very handy to to work with when you're looking for different types of files or different type of data or if you want to work with graphics those are extracted in the graphics tab and so on and so forth uh, so if we start move by moving on to the overview tab uh, the overview tab is basically where you instead of exploring the evidence as a file tree you can explore it by explore the files by extension or by category or by status so the file extension options are well quite simple the files are split up by uh, by file extension so if you want to look at all uh, 7-zip files you go to 7-zip if you want to look at all uh, AVI files, you go to AVI and you have all the AVI files listed. So that's neat, quite simple. And next we have the file category, which is uh, sort of taking different groups of files and grouping them together. So for instance, you may want to uh, examine all the Word doc all the text documents in the case. So then we have documents right here, which we can expand, and then we can look at Adobe Documents, uh, Microsoft Documents, WordPerfect, and so on. So if we want to go Microsoft Documents, we, we hit here. 
we can even filter it further so we can go Word or RTF. Uh, and there are others, so we can have a look at file system files. We can expand that. Uh, we can quickly get the Windows registry files or the shortcuts um, or whatever we want. Uh, it's a very handy way to find event logs, uh, for instance. Uh, we can move on, we can have the spreadsheets, Microsoft spreadsheets, and we see the Excel files. Uh, very nice. Uh, next we have the file status, which is uh, which is also very nice. For instance, this is where we can see if we have uh, files that are flagged by the known file filter, either as alert files or ignorable. We can have them listed here. Uh, we can have, if we have duplicate files, we can have them listed here. Uh, if we decrypted or carved files, we can have them listed here. Uh, but perhaps the most useful that I found is the encrypted files, which we can also list. So this is a listing of all the encrypted Oops, of all the, I don't want to do that, of all the encrypted files that are present in the, on this image. And, and why looking for encrypted files is interesting is because, well, if we have someone that's suspect, suspect of a crime and he encrypted files, well, then it's to a certain degree likely that the interesting data is in the encrypted files, which we have to crack. So that's uh, the overview tab. Uh, then we have the email tab, which filter out, uh, filters out all the emails. There are none in this case, if I'm correct. And then we have the graphic, which shows out all the graphics. Remember here, uh, in this case, we still have the uh, evidence tree, so we're going to have to decide where we look, want to look. But if we, for instance, quick pick uh, our entire evidence, then we only get the pictures. And remember that if we choose to make FTK create thumbnails, then the loading of the pictures in this view will be much faster than if we didn't, because it will load the thumbnails rather than the actual pictures. So that's the graphics tab. Next we have video, where you're analyzing videos. And remember that you could create thumbnails for video files, and then they will end up here. I'm not sure if I did. Oh, I did for this case. So you see that here we have the listing of the video files. If I want to get an understanding of what each and every one of those uh, contain, then I would have to look at them manually. But instead, if I created video thumbnails, I can just scroll through here. And yep, this is a slow process. Uh, however, the thumbnails will give me a rough idea about what the file, uh, the video files contain. Uh, I'm not doing this demo on a very strong computer, so now I'm going to have to restart FTK, and I'm actually not going to video edit this because this serves to show you that uh, this forensic tool, much like any other forensic tool, is quite resource uh, demanding, and if you don't have enough resources, it may very well crash when you try to do uh, computationally intensive things, such as looking at video. Let's move on to the Internet Chat tab instead. And this is where FTK tries to uh, take out all files uh, and data that's relevant to Internet history and chat history. And for instance, you can see that we have our Internet shortcuts. Someone has uh, created a shortcut to Shredder and VeraCrypt, for instance. Uh, there is also, we can go down into Internet Explorer files, we can look at favorites, uh, we have Chrome browser files, and we can look at history, and then we can check history, and then we can have some uh, uh, online surfing history right here within the file. So that's it for Internet Chat. Then we have Bookmark, which stores the bookmarks that we created. We're going to do that soon. And next we have live search, and this is where we do our live searches. Remember that live search is a search where you have the uh, where you have FTK search the entire drive from beginning to end and search uh, for some information. And we can do a search either for some arbitrary text. Uh, we can choose to do a pattern search, which is regular expression. Uh, if we hit the white button here, there are some. A regular expression created for us. So, for instance, we can search for any email address, uh, or we can search for 
and uh, mail to uh, and so on and so forth uh, we can also search for a hexadecimal pattern so if we type in some text and we want to search for that we go we, we type in the text we press add and then we press search and I'm just gonna show you really quickly what happens here then this is a processing task and it's quite time consuming so I'm not gonna show you the uh, this search, so I'm cancelling that out and hitting close, but the results of the search will end up here to the to the right and it's browsable. So you can see here live search, someone searched for boot manager and there were two hits in two files, so you can expand that, then you can expand further and then you see if the hits are in allocated space or in unallocated space and this time in this occurrence it's allocated so we expand that and then you can see in what files it is so you expand that and then you press the search hit and then you get a listing here so you see that it's in bcd.log and you get the file display then hexadecimal view and you can see where the actual hit is and you can view the file natural or filtered or text or properties or whatever you want and so next we have index search which is uh, where we use the index that we created during pre-processing for a close to inst instant search and here we can search for whatever we want and I'm going to show you real quick that if we start typing something uh, we will get tips on different similar words to the one that we have up here so like rule 8 then it wants us to, oh well, we can search for rule 8, there's going to be one hit okay seems nice we're adding that and then we have our search term in here and we go search now include all files and the results will end up here pretty much instantly and then it's the same thing we can expand it see where it is allocated space unknown types unknown types click that down there is our hit and it's in winred.wim for some reason i don't know why uh, another thing that we can do here is if we uh, go with more general terms. We can take Excel and Word for instance. There are a lot of searches for those, but there are some some small logic that we can do here. So one, uh, we have our operators. We can have either AND or OR. So right now we have AND which states that for a hit to be, a, for something to be a hit it must contain Word and Excel. We can also go OR and then it's Word or Excel. And if we hit Accumulate Results here, uh, FGK is going to give us a rough idea of how many results we will get altogether using the logical operator that we choose. So you can see that if we go AND, there is going to be 468, which does uh, indeed sound very weird. And if we go OR, it's going to be 15,809. Uh, how exactly this logic works is as you can understand, a bit of a riddle to me, but it's at least some, uh, there is some logic here that we can do. So, moving on to System Information tab, and remember that we talked about the System Information option during pre-processing. Uh, the results of that pre-processing option will end up here, and as you see, we have our, we can choose the disk image in this case there is only one in the case and then there is some registry information or that is fetched by FTK and presented here so for instance there is a list of installed applications there is a list of prefetch files uh, there is some browser information like credentials downloads URLs there is owner information about the computer and so on and so forth and there is a list of the users on the system and this is very useful and not at all time consuming so it's something that I urge you to do each and every time uh, finally we have the volatile tab which let us do some uh, primitive analysis of volatile storage uh, like RAM memory I haven't included any such uh, data into this case so it's empty at the moment so that was all for the menus and the tabs but before we end this quite a long demo to be honest I'm going to show you a little bit about filtering and columns uh, so first up if you see up here we have the opportunity to apply filters to our case so before we go on let's expand a little bit here and we're going to quick pick uh, the entire case 
which is a good time to show you down here that it, in the bottom of the case we have some information or some statistics about what is listed in the file listing. So for instance we can see now that there are roughly 440,000 files loaded uh, and filtered and total. And total here is the total amount of files that are listed. And we can modify what files we are viewing by applying different filters. So for instance we can click here and there are some preset filters for us. So for instance we can filter out so that we only see actual files and that's going to om omit for instance folders. And if we give FTK just a little bit time to work we will see that now there is only uh, below 300,000 files loaded into the file listing here. And that is because all the other uh, something like 150,000 items are filtered out. And now you also see that I lied because total is the total amount of files that could be loaded and loaded is the ones that are loaded with a filter applied. So there are others, other ones here as well. For instance we can choose to filter out only alternate data streams. Uh, I'm actually going to change the quick pixels to only be the users because this was a little bit too many files I think. Um, we can do only the card files and we can do a lot of different things. If we want to we can even create our own filters by going to the filter manager which I'm going to show you real quick and uh, creating a filter is basically we can either uh, do a compound filter by selecting several of the filters here. So for instance we're now on card files we can do card files and we can also do actual files. So if we use this filter we choose to include filter out all files that are actual files and are, that are card files. We can also change the logic so that we have or and th in that case it will be files that are either actual or card. Uh, we can also choose to ha to exclude. So we can, as we have now, we have actual files or card files, but maybe we don't want encrypted files, so we exclude encrypted files. Uh, if we want to, we can hit the little funnel down here and we can create our own filter. And we do our own filter, which we call A, so that it's on top of the list, own filter. And then we select the rules. So forever, f for instance, we can have that name is Meeper, Meeper, we can add, and as you see here, there are a bunch of different properties, and there are even more, so if we go to all features, those are all the different features that we can choose to use for a, f a filter that we create on our own. And then we have operators, which di differs depending on the property. And then we have the criteria. So we can do basically what we want. We can filter out depending on a time, created time, access time, yeah, basically whatever we want. Play around with it on your own if you like to. What you should know here is that you are going to, at some instance, apply a filter. And then you're going to forget that you applied a filter. And you're going to browse around. And you're going to be like, why are there no files in my case? There were more files before. Now there are none. But if you see that the background here is yellowy, that means you have a filter on and you, then you can either hit the funnel up here to turn the filter off or you can go to filter and then you can show unfiltered view and you will view everything. So that's, that's all for filters. And now the final thing of this demo is that we're going to have a look at columns. Because uh, as you see down here in the file view, um, uh, as you see down here in the file listing, uh, there are some columns. So for instance, now we have name, label, item number, path, category, and so on and so forth. And this is because we're using the column setting that's normal. But there are a lot of different other column settings that we can use. So for instance, there is a uh, internet history column that someone created. There is a email column setting that someone created. There is a file listing column that someone created. 
And if we want to, we can of course create our own uh, column settings, which we can do from manage columns, manage columns, and then we have all the, the different column settings, and then we can go new, and we call it my own, and then we have all the different fe uh, features here, all the different data types that we can use to display in, in our column. So for instance, we may want to do some one that contains the name, name, the logical size can be cool too, the logical size, and name. So this is a very uh, simple filter, but we check OK, and close, and now you can see here that there should be a filter named my own. And if we apply that, we're only going to see the logical size and the name of each item. And this can also be a very nice way if you know that you're looking for something specific or you don't want to show uh, all all of the categories that are here. You may just want the path, the name, and the size, or, or I don't know, uh, for quick analysis, then you can do that. So, I actually think that that was it. Uh, we're running up on 35 minutes, which is a long time for a video demo. But now I think that you have a good, uh, that you've had a good introduction to FTK in, in those two videos. And what I urge you to do to really get nifty and start working and learning FTK uh, or any forensics, other forensic software for that matter, is to get down and dirty and try it yourself. Uh, see you next time. Uh, for the rest of the videos, we're going to have a look at PRTK Regis Reviewer and Volatility for Memory Forensics, but this is all for now. Bye.